Good morning, y'all, and welcome back to the kitchen. I'm so glad you're here. If this is your first time to come to Apron Strings, welcome to my red kitchen. And if you've been here before, it's good to see familiar faces. I hope that if you like the contents on the channel, you'll subscribe and um, hit that little bell so you'll be notified of new videos. And then hit that thumbs up to let me know that you liked it. Also, when you hit the thumbs up, it puts it in your liked folder and you can go back and find the video easier uh, if later on you think I need to watch that again to see how to makes it easier. Today I'm going to make um, fried cabbage. Something that I enjoy. It is sim similar to cabbage rolls but it's all done in just a skillet kind of like a casserole. So I'm going to get y'all over to the butcher block as usual and we'll get the prepping done and I'll get everything going and make this delicious fried cabbage. The first thing that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to get some onion chopped. And I don't know that y'all can see, probably can see everything I'm doing. It's just a little bit more fun when there's a face and not just hands. I'm going to get the peelings off and put them in my compost bowl here. Makes cleanup a little easier. Have a little bowl handy. And I'm just going to give this a little rough chop, which means it's going to, doesn't have to be minced. It can be a little bit bigger for you that aren't used to cooking. A little bit bigger chunks is okay. And then I'll put it all in the skillet and just let it cook until it's kind of translucent. Doesn't need to be caramelized. If you would rather have some caramelized flavor in there, it's okay. And some of mine might caramelize a little bit. I really like caramelized onions. But I'm going to get this over here. I've got my skillet on the stove. I'm going to put, boy, that onion's hot. I'm going to cry a little bit. Maybe I need to tell a sad story where it'll all go together. Let me rinse the onion off. i got some chicken boiling over here. Uh, I'm going to make something with it. I've got my onion stirred up in a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. And I'm going to just put it on a medium heat and let it sweat down. Then I'm going to add a little roasted garlic to it, and um, uh, I'll probably add a can of Rotel tomatoes after I get, I've got a, some ground beef that I'm going to put in there and brown down, and uh, y'all just going to have to hang with me and see what I'm doing, because again, I don't have a written recipe for this, I will try to put just the ingredients below, but um, this is just kind of do what I do. So we'll get the onion sweated down, and then... I'll be back in a minute. Oh, the the onions, onions are doing. I thought I would just go ahead <clears throat> and I'm just going to kind of shred the, in, I'm not chopping it little bitty, just kind of shredding some of the cabbage off. And then I'll just cut that in half probably because I don't want it to be too little. I want to be able to get some bites of cabbage. And I don't think it's going to take the whole, oh, that's part of the core. We don't want that in there. I don't think I need the whole head of cabbage. Have a little bit left for something else. And I may go back and use the rest of it uh, once I get the meat done and see what how much it's going to look like. But I got my cabbage waiting. Got my meat waiting to go in when the onions get ready. So, y'all just hang on. We'll be back about that fast and y'all watch what's onions going on have next. sweated down. Hey there. And I'm gonna put my beef in here. Get it all broken up and uh, browned. Got a little thing somewhere that just breaks it up so well, but I don't see it right here, here. 
so I'll just use my trusty little wooden And I've told y'all before, but some of y'all might not have watched that video. If you have wooden spoons that you use, my favorite is the olive wood, and it's a little pricey, so you want to take good care of it. So when they get to looking like you found them on the beach, like a piece of driftwood, dry and white and dried out, get you some um, mineral oil, or you can get this brand of this butcher block is a booze block. B-O-O-S, and they make uh, a conditioner for the for the for their booze blocks, their butcher blocks, that uh, conditions it. And you can use that same stuff, and you can get it on Amazon. I don't have a link for Amazon. I'm going to see about doing that one day because I tell y'all about a lot of stuff. But anyway, you can get it on Amazon, but you need to. Uh, condition your spoons just like you would your cutting board. But mineral oil works just as well. You can get that just about anywhere in the pharmacy, that kind of a section of the store. You don't want to put your wooden spoons and stuff in the um, dishwasher either. That dries them out. And, and don't let them soak in water. You want to wash them, dry them, and put them up. Just a word to let y'all know how to take care of it and make them last forever. I love wooden utensils. For one thing, they're a little quieter when you're using them, but I don't know. I just like them. I love the olive wood. I had watched um, Cosmopolitan cornbread of the day, and Constance had this one that has the holes in it to drain. I ordered me one. I absolutely love it. I got this one while I was working at Sola Cobb. It's a little bit, little bit different, um, deeper. But then I have a olive wood ladle also that I love. This holds about a half a cup. But I love the the wood grain on the olive wood. But I have some teak and some bamboo, and I have all different kinds of wooden utensils, but I, I do take care of them and keep them um, well oiled and where they'll, you know, they'll last me the rest of my lifetime. And see, I'm making these videos where April can listen to what I'm saying, and when they become hers, she'll know how to take care of them. And she's got some now. Mama's teaching them. So I'm going to let this cook down and low for just a little bit, and then we'll add our cabbage and the rest of what we're going to put in here, and this will be ready to eat. I love fried cabbage. It needs a big old piece of cornbread with it, and you know what? It just might get it. Okay, I'm going to add about a fourth, probably a half of a teaspoon of salt, and a few creeks of black pepper. I told y'all that Sir La Taub didn't have these anymore, but I looked on their website for something the other day, and they do have them back in stock. I got this off of QVC because I couldn't find any. Taste and smell the black pepper. Y'all might not like as much as I do. Especially on cabbage. I like lots of black pepper. That's probably a half a teaspoon or three-fourths in all. You have to crank quite a bit to get some pepper out. Now guess what's next? Oh my goodness, I can just hear y'all onion and garlic powder. That's exactly right. I'm going to put... About a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. The other day I was doing this and I was saying how much I was putting and my granddaughter said, there ain't no way that you know. I said, get the measured spoon and I was spot on. That's about a tablespoon of onion powder and I may add more of that later. I'm just going to see what my taste 
is when I get it all together. I'm going to just mix this around with the meat and onion, and I'm fixing to uh, put my cabbage in and let it, I'm going to cover it and let it steam down, and then we'll taste it uh, for seasoning and add the tomatoes to it. I went it. ahead and added the rest of that head of cabbage because my cabbage had just cooked down to nearly nothing. So I'm letting this get just a little bit wilted, the extra that I put in there. And then we're going to uh, add some tomato products to it and finish seasoning it, and it'll be ready. Okay, I've got a can of tomatoes that I bought at uh, Aldi. It's like Rotel, but it's their brand. And it's just diced tomatoes with uh, green chilies in it. I'm going to add that to the cabbage. Give it a little stir and uh, let that cook just a little bit and we'll have it ready to go. Okay, so here it is, just all mixed together. The, the seasoning was spot on, so you don't have to worry about how much. Just watch the video and do what I told you to do. But it's a very good meal. You could add other vegetables as side dishes, but this is good. Thank y'all so much for coming to the kitchen with me today and visiting and watching me cook. And I hope this is something new for you or something that maybe you had a long time ago and you forgot about it. Now you can make some for your family. It's a comfort food and it's not bad for you. It's not so full of cheese and fat and stuff. I have a few like that. So make you some uh, fried cabbage and enjoy it with your family. Add you a pan of cornbread, mm -mm, you'll think you died and went to heaven. Now, if y'all can't find the Rotel or the tomatoes with green chilies, just get you uh, a can of diced tomatoes, and get you a jalapeno or your choice of a pepper and seed it and chop it up and put it in there. Add you a little bit of onion and a little bit of garlic and simmer that till they get a little tender and you'll have basically what's in uh, Rotel tomatoes. Just a heads up, because some people are so mistreated and abused that don't live in the United States, they can't get the stuff we can get. So, now y'all know how to make them if you can't get them. The good Lord bless and keep y'all. I'll see you again in a day or two with something else really good. And in the meantime, be putting some good food on the table and sitting down with your family and making some sweet memories or some savory memories. Get the checkers out and not Monopoly. That takes too long. We play Yahtzee and Gin Rummy and every now and then we will play Sorry. But I don't like Clue and I don't like Monopoly. So... Y'all can find something that everybody at your house likes and play some family games. Turn those silly devices off and do something that you have to think what you're doing and um, spend some time together talking and playing. That's just a tip. I'll see y'all uh, Saturday, if not before.